okay? So guys, if you want to say hello to YouTube, this is going to end up on YouTube. So you guys came at a good time. This is um, something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. And something, the direction I want to kind of head down with my channel. Uh, more so on YouTube than on Twitch, okay? So, I want to talk about um, this idea called specific reaps, okay? It is a conceptual idea that I think that we currently need in the game. Um, because I think it's the missing piece in the puzzle when it comes to PVE content, or PVE uh, items that we can get, um, consumables we can get, that can help people really push in the game a bit further than what they can right now. Um, so, we all know what reaps are. Reaps are reappraisal stones that allow us to reroll substats on runes. Um, the issue that I have with the reap system right now is the availability of reaps. Okay, so reaps right now, as a free to play player, you can get only three a week. Okay, plus events, um, or twelve a month. We're going to assume four weeks is, a, is is adding up to a month. So you get you get up to twelve a month as a free to play player plus, plus events. Um, as someone who spends, you can actually obtain up to sixty seven a month. You can buy fifty from the monthly rotational packs um and then you can also buy five from the special pack as well so that is 55 if you buy them um plus the 12 that you get as free to play or as as a as a you know a regular part of the game a craftable so that's 67 in total and as someone that plays for free will only get 12. so what that means right now is there's a big imbalance between reaps and um, between reaps for players that just grind the game versus players that spend money in the game, right? Twelve versus sixty-seven. That is way too big of a gap for me to, to you know, to think about. It is a one to almost five point five. So one for a free-to-play player, five and a half for a person that can spend money in the game. Now the reason why this is a big deal, I find in this game, is because you can actually. It's effectively getting five extra legend rings per like for one legend ring that someone someone can um someone can re-roll essentially, right? It's like five extra legend rings you get um to be able to uh what's it called? To be able to that you obtain and, and, and roll out as a hypothetical rune, right? So you get twelve hypothetical re-rolls. Um, as a free-to-play player, and you get 67 if you spend money in the game, up to 67 if you spend money in the game, plus events. And I think that gap there is way too big. And that's, every every single time a month goes by, it creates and and widens the gap for end-game players when, when that's like, it's one of the bigger issues. Now, um, the objective of my specific re-up idea is to kind of try and close that gap. Okay? So, my idea is to close that gap. And so, I want to try introduce a currency in the game that can allow people to still catch up, but not as easily as, hey, just give out more reaps in general. No, no, no. I wanted to bring out something new that people can... Come like a new item that can come out into the game that someone can actually use to be able to enhance their rune or ru like their rune options. And I didn't want to just go like standard reaps because I think that would be a bit unfair for people that do spend. I wanted to introduce something new where it's something specific, and this is where the terminology specific reaps came in. And I wanted it to be something that is r like rune type specific, and that is. The idea of introducing something that is rune type specific makes it a lot harder to be able to like get a certain type, like because we all know people always use reaps on like violent runes, war runes, or swift runes. I wanted to create a specific type that can work on you know energy runes, blade runes, guard runes, despair runes, um, you know rage runes, fatal runes, all that sort of jazz, just so then people can try use these other runes and bring them into the game a bit more. Because we're not seeing any of those runes really being used as much in the PvP side of things, in the RTA scene as much. And they're never going to be really ever considered RTA, uh, sorry, like, re targets. 
uh, because the value in the rune isn't quite there compared to like what Swift brings for turn one play, what Violent brings, or the depth the Violent runes can bring to your play style, as well as Will runes to give you that protection as well for your two set to cover off your Violent and your Swift units. So my implementation idea is this, all right? I want them to come up with the specific... I want them to bring the specific re idea into the game by making it kind of available to the dungeon you farm. So I initially came up with this craftable material called Auras of the... Whatever the name of the boss is. So Auras of the Giant, Aura of the Dragon, Aura of the Lich King. And they, have, they become kind of like a fixed drop for every run you do. You collect a certain amount... And then you can craft a re-up for that dungeon. So let's say you needed to collect 50 auras of the dragon to craft a re-up. What you do is you get all those materials. You go to the crafting building. You'd craft a re-up for dragons. And then it would spit out a random dragon's rune type. And that's what you can use the re-up on. So I could craft it and it could be focus rune. So it'd be a focus re-up. Um, it could be a violent. It could be a guard. It could be... You know, along those lines of revenge. So it'd be fixed to what sort of dungeon you'd be farming. So, and the reason I want it to be something like that is then it rewards your grinding efforts. And then I also, this is where I kind of get a little bit worried with the idea, um, is that I don't know how much they should limit it. I don't know if they should limit how many you could do. I think you should be able to craft only a certain amount of those in a week. I think it should be capped weekly. Now, I haven't really decided if I want it to be capped at like 10 for the week or 5 for the week. Okay, I was thinking 10 for the week because that gives 10 more into the pool. But then I don't know if that's too much because I always thought 10 for auto runs is too much and I still feel that way. So maybe... Maybe an implementation, maybe at the start, it's five per, per week. But that kind of gives us more than double of the, the amount of reaps we can already obtain as a as a player that is grinding the game. Um, there are a couple of questions in the chat that says, the people that spend, the, the people that spend on crystals would still widen the gap from free-to-play. Wouldn't that widen the gap even more since the whales have crystals to grind even more? Um, okay, so the reason why I think it's okay... Uh, let me so the reason why I think it's okay is because it allows you to grind. It allows you to grind and use your crystal resources as best you can. I think the argument of not being able to grind enough is not really too valid. Because I feel like if you can kind of find the right balance of your crystal usage, it's still okay. As long as there's a cap on how many you can craft. If you can craft un an unlimited amount, then it becomes an issue. But I think if you can grind to a certain amount, that's why I said 5 or 10, make it obtainable, then it's kind of okay. So, um, I, no, 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 not 5, per, there was another comment. Five, not 5 per room type, 5 in total or 10 in total. So that is my idea. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking if you can grind 5 or 10 per week, makes it um, an extra 20 to 40 per month. So then what does that mean to the ratio? It means 32... So I need to break this down. If we do 5 per month... Uh, sorry, 5 per week. That makes it 20 per month. It makes it 32 versus 87. Okay? That is a 1 to 3 ratio. If we do 10 per week, it makes it a total of 52 for, free, uh, for grinding. And then it makes it uh, 107 for people that also buy. That kind of makes it one to two. That's that's the reasoning behind why I was thinking of going ten per week, and makes it a bit easier. It makes it a, it closes the gap. But then at the same time, it also um, not only does it drop the ratio, it also means you can also um, it may also bring in other rune types into the game as well. So I want to talk about some of the source spot discussion points. And why it's okay with this. Okay, so the one thing I wanted to talk about was the impact of sales of reaps. So, why would Comp to us not consider this idea? It may impact sale of reaps. So that's one of the that's my first point there. So I don't think it would impact sale of reaps. 
I think if anything, if people got more tastes of doing reaps, they may be more inclined to buy reaps. People doing reaps on like blade runes, guard runes, despair runes, all the odd odd sod sort types of runes may actually incline them to buy reap packs to use on their violent runes, their will runes, their swift runes. Because you may not be getting enough reaps to be able to make those runes work. Um so that was the idea behind that. And it also provides another solution to like underused rune types like our endure runes um guard runes i keep using as an example focus you know nemesis it kind of brings those up a little bit more because maybe we've got these really good nemesis runes sitting in storage with the really good uh innate stat that we just cannot utilize because one we're probably never going to re-up it there but two we've kept them because you know what if you know we already went through a phase in the game where we never thought re-ups was going to be a thing but now um, but now, what about if they brought something out, like they did with re -ups? Suddenly, you'd have all these runes that you just sold that maybe you could have re right? So, um, a lot of people did learn from re to hold on to some of those sort of rune types, and I think it's okay. I think if they brought out, it might, we might see some more other types of runes being used in, in high-level PvP content, just because more people actually are able to use them now, because... The reap went really well for them. Now, I think the only thing is the, the quantity. I'm concerned with the quantity that I'm throwing out there. Because it could be too high. And it could make a lot of runes. It could make a lot of people really strong really quickly as well. So I don't know what my numbers should be there. I don't know if it should have been 10 per week or 5 per week. But I think it should be something that's brought in for us to craft. And randomize for the dungeon that you've been farming. And capped at a certain amount for the week. Just to kind of close the, the gap of number of re-ups available as a grinding player versus a player that spends money. Okay? Don't think I had a fifth point. Oh, summary. Okay. There is a fifth point. So summarizing this uh, really quickly, my idea is called specific re-ups. It's to find the balance between the current re-up systems where there is 12 re-ups uh, for people that grind versus 67 that people can spend money on. My idea is to introduce a new type of re called Specific re where you grind a specific dungeon, obtain these aura of the giant dragon or lich king, and then you craft re -ups. 10 re uh, You can craft 5 to 10 re per week extra you can craft, and it lowers the ratio from 1 to from one to 5.5 to 1 to 3 or 1 to 2. Okay? Um... Source spot discussions, why it's okay, sale of reaps. I don't think it impacts the sale of reaps because it might incentivize people to spend more money on reaps because suddenly you got a taste of reapping a lot more runes that are kind of ad hoc and you're not really getting the violent will or swift. I don't think it touches, I don't think it impacts those at all. Um, and it also provides a solution to underused rune types. Now, the only thing I didn't cover off is what sort of impact does it have to players in the game? And I'm going to talk about it from every level of player in the game. I'm going to start off with early game players. How does it help early game players? To be honest, it's not going to help early game players too much. Their rune pool isn't deep enough to be able to reward them for these reaps. Okay? So this reap idea may not impact brand new players early farming dungeons. Mid game players who start having some legend runes, um, this might help them. This might help them actually be able to, you know, they might have some runes sitting in storage that they that they will never ever use, like we've been collecting over the years, that suddenly they might be able to utilize now and with these re may be able to bring them into their, their main pool of runes that they want to use. For late game players, it helps us refine some of the junk we've been holding onto for a very long time and it helps us progress it helps us bring out these other rune sets that we don't really use there, and it helps us um, kind of make a set complete. Uh, what is mid game? Okay, so early game, I would say, would be people still completing PVE content. Uh, mid game would be players that have completed all PVE content, including TOAs, and are now moving into PvP areas. So that's the start of like focusing on Guild War, potentially RTA, but you've already done DB12, GB12, Necro12. So the start of mid game would be all PVE, all Dungeon 12s. TOA, TOA normal, TOA normal, TOA hard, um, R5 being a BJ5 team, and you're starting to work towards um, guild content and RTA. An endgame player to me is like 
Conqueror 3, Conqueror 2 RTA. And if you're into Guild War content, maybe like G2, G3 Guild War content, that's an end game player to me. If you're not at the end, which is the top level of game, then you are a mid game player. There are a lot of players, uh, like I'd say maybe only, I mean, look at the percentages. Probably 5% of players, 3% of players are end game. Then I'd say a large portion, probably the next 15, 20% of players would be mid game. And then the remainder would be early game. That's because they're still working on the early aspects of the game. And that's the way I've broken it down. That's the way I think it works. And I th there is a big portion of early game players that are kind of in the moving towards mid game. So yeah, that was my idea. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to end up posting this to YouTube. So hopefully we get some traction with these sort of ideas. I'm going to do some more of these in the future. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you want to see more of this content, subscribe to the channel. If you have something that you wanted to add to this video, or would like to think it's a good idea as well, make sure you leave it in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll have a read over it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.